Bush, the Editorial Director of Spectroscopy, and I'm here today with Don Pavanka of Insight Corporation. Don, thank you for joining us today. Oh, thanks for letting me talk. So, Don, what do you think are the most exciting advances being made in Raman spectroscopy today? Just in thinking about it here, I took a quick look at some of the recent literature, and there's been just so many advances and tremendous advances in Raman spectroscopy across such a wide range of analytical problems and areas. There's a lot of literature based around introduction of novel sampling technologies and novel hardware. We can very quickly find, for example, spatially offset detection, sub-diffraction limited experiments. People have gone to look at surface enhanced technologies, mapping. Raman optical activity is one of my favorites. But what we can see, though, is that it just spans a wide range of technologies and a r wide range of sampling based from the hardware side. And these are all fantastic advancements, and they provide a lot of enthusiasm for Raman spectroscopy. When I look to the future, I tend to focus more not so much on Raman technology itself, but rather on the implementation and the delivery. For example, in, in the pharmaceutical industry, Raman and vibrational spectroscopy in general, they've predominantly been used as a reactive mode for characterization and validation of synthesis to profile something that has happened. And there's a lot of work in this area. But where I see the future of it, and there's also a lot of work in the proactive and integral integration of Raman into processes themselves. In these cases, it's not Raman that's providing feedback, but actually Raman that's driving the process. We see this, for example, in medical applications, in disease analysis. There's cases where there's screening and security applications, forensic analysis, where Raman's not just a tool, but it actually provides the end result. And I think these are the cases where Raman will make it out into the real world and make it into visible applications beyond just the analytical lab. For me personally, I guess that somewhat the age of Raman where we can look at it and say, what have we developed with Raman or what new technology do Raman do we have? That might be overshadowed by now. What can Raman deliver and how can Raman cause change in processes and change in the way we do things? So for me, it's those applications that I tend to think are the most exciting. You are known for your work in both the pharmaceutical and chemical industries, developing methods for the analysis of chemical structures and their relationship to physical, chemical, and biological properties. Where would you like to see that work extended, whether by yourself or others? Well, naturally, I'd like to see the work accepted by others so that it has the opportunity to continue to grow and to generate pathways forward in the search for novel pharmaceutical compounds, which is primarily where my work was based, is in the understanding of structure property relationships or structure biology relationships in compounds. I really do think that we've only begun to scrape the surface of this technology with respect to the applications for both Raman and infrared. I think one of the things that will help drive this and one of the things that I would really like to see is a much closer collaboration between the analytical chemistry um, and the computational and medicinal chemists. In the discovery effort, when you integrate these technologies, you come up with a lot better system than if each of the functions are working by themselves. For example, the medicinal chemists can come up with new ideas for compounds. The computational chemists, they'll model compounds, look at ligand receptor interactions, but primarily from a geometric standpoint, where with Raman we can actually look at the electronics of these interactions. So when you get people talking and you combine the technologies, I think you have a lot better chance of success and a lot better chance of making an impact within the discovery efforts. Finally, when you look at the Raman spectrum, what you end up with is a very unique three-dimensional descriptor for a molecule. When we have this sort of a description, the, the challenge is to understand what it means. And as we combine the disciplines within chemistry, medicinal, computational, and vibrational, we're able to be able to better understand the characterize the ligand interactions. And I think this will drive us forward. What do you feel are the greatest challenges to the application of Raman and vibrational spectroscopy more broadly to the pharmaceutical industry, and how do you think these could be overcome? Well, I'd want to start in answering that question by stating that I think that the instrumentation that, that we've been delivered by the vendors is, is fantastic. For me personally, the instrumentation limitations are seldom the hurdle. The hurdle really comes in, in our ability as scientists to take what we have given in terms of hardware and find new approaches to apply it into chemical systems. I guess in answering this, I'd preface my comments by stating that my experience is basically in pharmaceutical research. In the pharmaceutical research, we have to recognize that there are also some extremely strong analytical techniques that are well suited to the research environment. For example, HPLC, LCMS, NMR, 
these are, have a long history within discovery, and they're very applicable to the problems which discovery face. So therefore, I don't think we should try to go head-to-head -head with these other techniques. What we need to do is find complementary applications with unfulfilled analytical needs. Historically, we've seen cases where this happens, and it can be an extremely successful venture. One is the combinatorial library synthesis, where they do a solid phase synthesis. Because it isn't a solid phase, the traditional analytical techniques of HPLC, LCMS, NMR, et cetera, don't really apply because it is bound on a solid. In the case of NMR, you can do some magic angle spinning, but it's not so much a routine technique. In a case like this, though, the vibrational spectroscopy gang could step right in and fill that void with a very quick, a very rapid, and a very descriptive analysis. So it's a case like that where we see that we can complement rather than try to go head-to-head -head with very well-entrenched techniques. We also see this, for example, in Raman with remote sensing or online sensing. You may have situations where you can't actually get to the reaction, either through heat, pressure, or danger. And the ability to use Raman to look right into the reactions where you can't, for example, use NMR or the LC techniques, that gives us a chance to be able to go forward. But I think these are the kinds of challenges, at least in the pharmaceutical industry, that Raman will face is that there are so many good techniques already there. Fantastic. Don, thank you very much for talking to us today. Oh, I really appreciate the chance to talk with you and to share.